Yo, what's up, sports bettors? I just ran two and a half miles, and I got some prize picks for today, so let's get into it. Yo, so I have five player props in this video. They're all unders, and I say this all the time, but I mean, literally, if you want to beat prize picks, this is what you have to understand. This is literally basically all you have to understand. Prize picks is a really unique platform because they're not going to change your payouts based on you selecting overs or unders, right? So you're going to notice as I change in bead to over or under 11 rebounds, your payout doesn't change, right? Prize picks is a fixed payout platform. Any five picks you select, you're always getting the same payout. So basically the strategy for beating them is pretty simple. You just want to find spots where sports books have one side heavily favored. So as an example, we can take a look right here, is for Nick Claxton, if you look at DraftKings, right, I'll zoom in a bit, but if you look at DraftKings, they have his under 12 and a half points as the heavily favored outcome, right? DraftKings is giving you plus 115, they're giving you plus money on the over, plus 115, betting 100 to win 115. So this is how prize picks is different than sports books, right? On prize picks, you don't see odds. Every bet on prize picks, every over, under, every pick, has technically the same price because it's not impacting your payout. Whereas on sports books, they change around odds based on what is more likely. So because sports books have the under juiced, right? The under is a lot worse odds, plus 115 versus minus 145. The sports books are telling you, so you have numerous data points telling you, and this tool I'm using is called the Odds Jam Positive EV positive expected value tool, and all this tool does, there's nothing super complicated about it, right? There's no magic going on, right? Literally, all this tool is doing is it's scanning all these MLB, NBA lines on prize picks, as well as all the sports books, and showing you spots where books have one side heavily favored. So you're going to notice for Claxton, right, all of the bookies, they have his under 12 and a half points as the heavily favored outcome. You can see it on DraftKings right here. So Odds Jam is literally just reading in all of this data to show you those spots where sportsbooks have an under or an over really heavily favored. But in this case, we want to go with Claxton under. So that's really the strategy for beating prize picks, right? You want to find five plays, the five best plays, where sportsbooks have the most juice towards the under or the over, but in this case, all my plays are under, so let's just say under. Right here, all the sports books have the under heavily favored, so this is a profitable player prop, a profitable NBA prop for today to go with. And it's really that simple, and I mean, you just have to internalize, and I say this all the time, but again, sports betting is not that complicated. It really is just about finding value. So here you can see the 76ers, unsurprisingly, they're much higher ranked and much better record than the Nets, whatever, but you can see they're a heavy favorite. They're like minus 340 odds. So if we click into it, and you can see it's the same for the Celtics, the 76ers are big favorites, right? So it's no different here. I mean, sure, <laughs> Nick Claxton isn't minus 400 odds or minus 350 to go under 12 and a half points, but the sports books are telling you Right? The market is telling you every other data point in the market, BetRivers, DraftKings, every sports book, be it Bet Online, BallyBet, BetUS, right? all these books are saying the same thing. They're all saying, hey, Claxton's under should be the heavily favored outcome. And I've explained this before, but like for the math behind prize picks, it's pretty simple. All that matters is the win probability for each of your picks. So if I go back up here, and Claxton is one of the plays I went with, so let's look at Hunter Brown, right? Let's say this is a play you want to go with. Basically, the way that prize picks works is you want to be playing five flex or six flex. That's what's optimal. And the reason it's optimal, and I'll show you right here, is let's just say, as an example, right? Let's say you can get your over-unders correctly 56% of the time. So when you're playing on prize picks, you can hit your over-unders, just like Hunter Brown, five and a half strikeouts. You can select his over-under correctly 56% of the time, right? So if you're playing two-pick power plays, and like there's no, there's nothing special here. This is literally just the math behind prize picks payouts. A lot of people are like, oh, this doesn't make sense. You should still be playing two-pick power plays, and it's just bogus. I mean, it's literally bogus. So for two-pick power plays, if you're winning... 56% of your picks, and you got to think about it. If you can select over-unders correctly 56% of the time, that's pretty good, right? That's not horrible. You're winning over 50% of the time, but you're still losing money 
on two pick power plays. Your ROI long term would be negative 6% if you're hitting 56% of your picks. So if you're hitting, winning 56% of your picks, you're still losing 6% of your money on two pick power plays. Whereas for five flex, you're actually really profitable. So if you can still hit 56% of your picks in a five flex, your ROI is 12%, right? So basically all that odds jam is doing is finding those spots where sportsbooks have an under really heavily favored and your player prop is winning, you know, 55, 56% of the time. So all the data is telling you here, all the sportsbooks are telling you here is, hey, Claxton's under should be heavily favored around like minus 140 odds. It should be roughly a minus 140 favorite. And that's profitable enough there's enough juice towards the under. The sports books are telling you that the under is favored enough, just like DraftKings, that you're going to be winning that pick roughly 55, 56% of the time. So you're going to have a positive ROI long-term on prize picks. I mean, a lot of people will be like, oh, you know, you're not considering his highlights. You're not considering his last game. The thing is, is that's all baked into the odds right? No offense. Sportsbooks know everything you know. They mo they know more than you know. They know injuries before you do. They have better data feeds. They have better models. This is like a $10 billion company, DraftKings. Their models are better than yours. And best of all, you have numerous data points. It's not just like it's DraftKings saying that the under is favored. The entire market, every single sportsbook is saying that the under is the favored outcome. Right, you can see Bet Rivers, they have a little more juice towards the under. They have the under as a minus 155 favorite, so even bigger favorite. 1.5 to 1 favorite, roughly 60%, right, is what Bet Rivers is saying. So, again, you're never going to get a perfect answer as to what exactly should the odds be because all these sports books set lines independently, but you can get a pretty good sense looking at the entire market that, like, yeah. I mean, every sports book has Claxton's under favored. Some books like DraftKings and BetRivers have the under a bit more favored, but clearly the under is favored, so this is a great play to go with on prize picks. So long story short, first three picks I went with, there's also value on underdog fantasy. I mean, I say this a lot too, but it's literally the core of sports betting. I'm just telling you guys, I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars sports betting. There's no magic. There's no BS. I don't know any coaches, whatever. It's just about putting in the work, right, and finding value in the market. So for this play, Trent Grisham to get a hit, this play is profitable on underdog. If you only have prize picks, this play isn't available, right? So more sports books means more profitable betting opportunities. Whereas this play on Claxton, it's not available. Well, it is available on underdog, but prize picks has slightly better payouts for these five pick entries, so you'd rather play it on prize picks. But long story short, I went with Murray under, Claxton under and Kyle Gibson under, right? Like there's no magic here. Some days there's more value in the MLB. Some days there's more value on underdog fantasy. Some days there's more bets on Fliff or FanDuel or DraftKings, right? Currently, I'm in California. Not a lot of sports books here. So I'm kind of stuck with prize picks and Fliff and parlay play. So there's a lot more bets probably if you're in Colorado. You see a lot more sports books if you're an odds jam user, a lot more profitable plays. But on prize picks, all the books have Kyle Gibson's under heavily favored. So this is a great player prop bet to go with, right? It's really that simple. Um, and again, what's so powerful about sports betting is this return. And you can tell I'm tired after this run. I'm chilling. But this return is daily, right? This is why I love sports betting so much and why you can make a lot of money doing it, right? Is if you can earn, let's just imagine you bet on every single, you know, every day there's the MLB you're betting. There's 162 games in the regular season. So if you just have a 1% ROI on your bets, a 1% advantage, a 1% ROI, think about the return over the course of the season. If you're putting in the work, that's 162% return, right? 1%, 162 games in the regular season, 162% return. So that's pretty cool. Um, but anyways, there's another tool that, Odds Jam recently launched. It's called the Fantasy Screen. It's in beta mode. Beta just means like testing mode, whatever. It's a new feature. It's currently free, a new betting tool. You can use it for prize picks. I mean, any of these fantasy sites, right? Any of these fantasy sites that do not vary your payout based on you selecting over or under, again, I recommend you get as many as you want. If you want to make money sports betting, you should have all of these, right? Some days there's a ton of value on Thrive Fantasy. Some days it's jock market that's, you know, asleep at the wheel, screwing up and offering lots of value. Sometimes it's no house advantage. 
right? More books, more profitable betting opportunities, more money in your pocket. But anyways, all this tool does is kind of like the EV tool. I mean, it's pretty similar, but it will just show you, hey, here's how likely your play is to win. And where are these numbers coming from? Is it coming out of thin air? No, it's all based in sportsbook odds, right? All the books have Kyle Gibson's under as a heavy favorite. And again, this tool's free to use right now. It's been free for like three weeks. So take advantage of it, you know, fantasy screen. You want to find profitable plays. You need some plays on prize picks or underdog or whatever. Just use this. This is where I'm finding basically all my bets, right? All my plays on prize picks underdog are basically coming from this, the EV tool, maybe a couple other tools, but not really. I mean, this is kind of really good. <laughs> so this tool is pretty simple, right? On prize picks, you want to make money. You got to be hitting your props over 54.25% of the time. So it just shows you literally in green all the player props that are hitting at a rate above 54.25%, like Kyle Gibson under four and a half strikeouts. And that's based on the fact that all the bookies, all the sports books have the under heavily favored. So that's a great player prop to include on prize picks. Gibson under four and a half strikeouts. All the books have heavy juice towards his under. The under is heavily favored. I mean, follow the data. Come on. 99% of sports bettors, oh, they trust their gut. They think they're smarter than the sports books. No offense, you, whatever crappy model you have, is not better than DraftKings model that they've invested hundreds of millions of dollars into and all their employees, right? And they're taking bets, right? Sports books take bets and they move around action due to supply and demand. So sharp bettors, you know, their opinions are reflected in the market just the same way that the price of a stock is based on supply and demand. Facebook is trading at whatever, 200 bucks? That's because that's basically where supply and demand is equal, right? That's how that works. So unless you think you're smarter than everyone else, you know, you don't have an advantage knowing if Facebook's gonna go up or down. And it's no different in sports betting. Unless you think you're smarter than the sports books and every sports better, which is the market, just follow the data, right? Take advantage of inefficiencies in the market. So the reason you can make money off prize picks so I know this sounds kind of depressing. It's like, oh, the sports books are so smart. But the thing is, is they slip up, right? Prize picks has tens of thousands of lines. Same with Underdog, same with FanDuel, same with DraftKings, and they slip up. It's too much for them to manage. They all want to be unique. They all want to set lines independently. So as a sharp better, you just pick them off when they're screwing up. That's all I do all day. Pick off sports books when they're screwing up. So five picks in my flex. I got Gibson under four and a half Ks, Claxton under 12 and a half points, Murray under 29 and a half PRAs, Carlos Carrasco under five and a half Ks, and Mitchell Robinson under 10 and a half rebounds. Some value in the NBA, some value in the MLB. We have a profitable play. We're going to make money sports betting. Life's good. It's Saturday morning. Enjoy your day.